What do you notice about how the peregrine falcons look? What do you notice about what the peregrine falcons do? Good morning, my environmental detective friends. Looking forward to doing some new investigations and detective work with you. Let's go find clues right here in our own neighborhood environment. So early today, we saw a painting on the wall. The painting was of a bird. It was brown, yellow, and small. We decided to find out what inspired this art using our eyes, ears, noses, hands, and hearts. So we put on our shoes and we went out for a walk, searching high and low through the pebbles and the rocks. We looked up in the trees and all along the path, through the dirt on the ground and the leaves on the grass. We kept walking and walking, searching and searching, hoping to find some birds that were chirping. We passed grasses as green as the leaves were up high and the redwood trees that were touching the sky. We saw wind blowing leaves and forks in the road and the path that we chose made a difference, I suppose. But no matter where we looked, we could not find a bird. Though we did pass beautiful poppies, weeds, trucks, and some herbs, Looking up, down, left, and right, we saw the blue skies, gray pebbles, and even roses that were white. We saw purple plants and rocks of different shades. We examined their sizes and evaluated their weights. Now wait, all along we could hear birds chirping in the trees, but no birds appeared out of those green swaying leaves. So we decided to pack up and head back to the house. Hey, look! We watched the mailman delivering on his route. Wait, maybe it could be in the mail. We opened up the mailbox, but to no avail. So we headed back to our backyard to continue the search, climbing up the stairs and looking for some type of perch. We didn't find any, but we did find a spider hanging out. And then in the sky, we saw a plane near the clouds. We searched in the dirt and behind the pink roses no birds there, but what a smell for our noses. We checked in the plants and saw a bee that was buzzing underneath the soil where the worms and bugs were grubbing. So finally, we decided to go back inside. But before doing that, we had one last thing to try. A breathing exercise to help our senses come awake and to continue the search for birds on this day. You can put up your hands and follow like these. In. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. You can also use your hands to activate your five senses. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you touch? What do you feel? What do you hear? Your five senses. And just before we went inside, we heard tweets from nearby. So we dashed back out as quick as birds usually fly. And on our mailbox was a bird as blue as the sky. Our curiosity had led our eyes to finally find what inspired the painting that hung on our wall. We watched it for a bit and then reflected on all the things we had seen, heard, smelled, and touched while searching for a bird. And we felt very happy that our curiosity had led to all that we observed. Hi, ornithologists. It's Miss French. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at our inquiry chart that we created because we wrote some things here that we thought we know about birds. 
but we're still really not sure. We don't have evidence to prove it's true or not. So in just a minute, we're gonna watch a video to see if we can confirm, prove it's true with evidence, or refute, mm, we were incorrect, by watching this clip that we get from Wildcare. This is what we're gonna be looking to see if we can confirm or refute. This is what we think we know about birds. Birds fly, birds have feathers, they eat, they lay eggs, they make nests out of leaves and twigs. Look for these facts in the video to see if you have evidence to prove it's true. Also, pay attention to these two questions, things that we want to know about birds. In the video, pay close attention to this question. Is there any evidence or information to tell us how do birds fly? And this last question we came up with, do all birds eat the same food? I hope you love the video as much as I do and make sure to say thanks to our friends at Wildcare for this video about the peregrine falcon. So this is Pele, and Pele is a peregrine falcon, and he is one of Wildcare's educational animals called our wildlife ambassadors. And Pele is here at Wildcare because he had a wing injury. So he is the fastest animal in the world. When he does the dive that he does in order to catch a bird out of the sky, because that's what he eats for lunch, when he does that dive, it's called a stoop, and he can go as fast as 200 miles an hour. So he is the fastest animal in the world. This particular peregrine came in with a wing injury. We think he may have been hit by a car, and we don't know why, uh, where, and he was not able to be fully recuperated. He didn't fully to recover from that wing injury. Interestingly, if he had been a pigeon or an animal that doesn't need to do that amazing dive in order to survive in the wild, he probably would have been releasable, but he was not able to fly well enough to do the dive that he would need to actually get the food that he would need to survive. And so that is why he is here at Wild Care as an educational animal. Such an amazingly handsome bird. And you look at all of the different adaptations that the peregrine has to be able to hunt for prey on the wing like he does. You can see his very smooth, sleek feathers. You can see the shape of his wings are very, very angular, and that allows him to scoot through the, the air very, very quickly. He has special ridges around his eyes and his beak that allow him to uh, go extra fast and not lose uh, his, his ability to see. And he also has those very big feet, which mean that he can grab a bird out of the sky when he when he dives down onto it. Welcome back. When I was watching the video, there was some information. I really paid close attention to the structure of the peregrine falcon. When I was observing the peregrine falcon, the structure that helped me to confirm, yes, birds fly with its feathers and wings. So I'm gonna take my black marker and I'm gonna put a star over here and I can say, this is true. Birds fly. We saw the evidence of that in the video. Well done, scientists. Birds have feathers. Thumbs up. I observed the peregrine falcon had feathers. That's a structure that helps birds fly. They eat. Think, think, think. Did you observe the falcon eating something in the video? I did. We can put another star here and we can confirm it with a V for video. This is called citing our source. We can prove it's true because we saw it in the video and we might read it or learn about it somewhere else and we can add to citing our evidence. They lay eggs. Think, think, think. Did you see the peregrine falcon laying eggs in the video? Or you didn't observe that. I didn't observe it either, so we can't confirm it with the information we have so far. They make nests out of leaves and twigs. Yes, we saw it in the video. Mm, we didn't see it. 
We didn't observe it in that video, but we could prove it using a different source. Now we're going to come over to one of our questions. How do birds fly? And do all birds eat the same food? Friends, we can answer these questions now with the evidence that we have in the video, but I also have another source that I'm going to share with you that will help us to get more information to answer these two questions. This other piece of information I'm going to share with you now, it's different from the video. This is something that sometimes teachers call an input chart or a draw and label. And it's a picture or a chart that's going to have some information, more information about our peregrine falcon. I did a quick sketch of the peregrine falcon, and now I'm going to teach you some facts about the peregrine falcon. We've been talking a lot in our poem and also in our inquiry chart about the word structure. Say it and do it, structure. That's what something has or how it's built. I'm going to write the word structure here, and then I'm going to sketch my building blocks to remind me it's what something has or what it's made out of, how it's built. In the video, I saw that the peregrine falcon has smooth, sleek feathers. Say that with me, smooth, sleek feathers. And we'll go like this when we say it. Smooth, sleek feathers. The smooth, sleek feathers, they have a job. Say function. That's what this structure does for the bird. Over here, I'm going to write the word function. That's the job of the smooth, sleek feathers. The smooth, sleek feathers of the peregrine falcon help that falcon to fly really fast. In fact, it can fly 200 miles an hour. It's the fastest animal on earth. I'm going to write it here. It flies fast, 200 miles per hour. Structure, what it has. Function, the job. The smooth, sleek feathers of the peregrine falcon help it to fly fast. Hmm, how do birds fly? <laughs> well, this bird's smooth, sleek feathers help it to fly really fast. Here's another structure, something else the peregrine falcon has. It has V-shaped wings. And I'm going to do a sketch here of a V-shape. Make a V with me. It's a letter in the alphabet. The V-shaped wings, they help the bird fly really fast. That's part of the job. But the V-shaped wings also help the peregrine falcon to dive and catch its prey. Say dive. Oops, almost wrote it in the wrong color. The function of the V-shaped wings is to dive. That's what it has. That's the job. Hey, how do birds fly? With their V-shaped wings and their smooth, sleek feathers. Another structure of the peregrine falcon is you might have noticed in the video. I'm going to make a little arrow here. Falcon doesn't have a mouth like we do. It has a beak. Say that with me, beak. And this beak isn't just your normal beak. This beak of the peregrine falcon is built in a special way. It's really sharp. It could cut you and it's curved. I'm going to write sharp, curved, beak. And the curve means it goes down like this a little bit. The function or the job of that sharp, curved beak is, you're never going to believe this, but pay attention, because we wanted to know, do all birds eat the same food? This structure helps the falcon eat other birds. Whoa, 
That's pretty amazing. I didn't know the birds could eat other birds, but with this beak, that structure can let it do that job. Another structure of the peregrine falcon is it has something called talons. Say it and do it, talons. And the talons, my friend, are these really sharp claws on the end of the falcon's feet. These talons have a job. They have a function. The function of the talons is it helps the falcon catch its prey. So I'm going to write here, instead of catch, I'm going to write grab prey. Prey means what it eats. Here's the falcon. It's coming down with its talon. It can grab its prey. Say structure. Structure, what it has. Say function. Function, what it does. On another day, we'll talk about cause and effect. That is what something is that makes something else happen. Cause and effect, the what and the why. Welcome, it's Sunshine here. We're at Bayside MLK in Marin City at their beautiful playground. I can see and I know that the bay is right near me and we have a lot of birds around here. So let's take a moment to move like birds. Beginning with that great blue heron, I want you to take your deep breath in and you're gonna push your air out and put your arms out to the side, feeling the sun on you just like that blue heron. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Extending those fingers from this move you're going to take your deep breath in and I want you to turn to your back. So you're gonna take a deep breath, turn, and we're gonna twist like the peregrine. That peregrine falcon, deep breath in, deep breath out. Deep breath in. And now breathe out while you turn to the other side. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Feel that twist in your torso, just like the peregrine. Take a deep breath out. Breathe it in, turn. Take a deep breath in, turn to the front. And from here, we're gonna practice our balance like the seagull, holding my blue heron pose. I'm gonna take my left foot and I'm gonna put it low here. That seagull's on one leg. So we're gonna build our balance. Deep breath in. Bring your leg up. Deep breath in. Extend your arms out. Deep breath in. Bring your arms overhead. And if you want, keep breathing. You could turn your leg out. Take your deep breath in. Put your arms out to the side. And slowly bring your foot down. Let's do that on the other side with your right foot. Take your deep breath in. Put your toe out there, and you can always keep it here for your balance. And as you feel your balance, just like the seagull, you pull it up. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Deep breath in. Arms overhead. And you can also put your leg out. Arms go down, bring your foot down. And now we're gonna bring our arms back to that blue heron. And we're gonna roll over and look like the peregrine sipping water. So deep breath in, roll your body forward, cradling your arms. 
Put your arms straight down like it's your beak. Deep breath in, deep breath out. I want you to bring your arms up. Deep breath in. And ending in the blue heron. So we're in our sit spot. I have my notebook, my pencil, and I'm gonna ground myself first in my feelings. So make sure that you check in with your breaths. And let's go back to what Sean showed us with our hands. So we're gonna start by breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out. And while I do that, I also check in with how am I feeling right now? And I use that feeling tree to ground myself in my thoughts, to make sure I'm present, and to put myself in the place where I can take in all that I see, all that I hear, all that I feel, all that I smell, and all that I touch. So let's together observe our birds. I'm getting my last thoughts and ideas in my notebook from those birds that we saw. I'm thinking of the poses that we did, how birds move, and recording that in my notebook. Remember, we want to see what you're thinking and what you're doing, so please be sure to send your things to all these different ways that you can share your ideas. And remember, every day that you do your sit spot, we want you to go outside, we want you to explore, we want you to have fun, and we want you to be safe. What do you wonder about how the peregrine falcons look? What do you wonder about what the peregrine falcons do?